Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make an RPG in Unity, and welcome to episode 20. So this time we're going to look at creating a mini-map, we're going to create our money system and display it on our screen, and we'll also look at a skybox. So first things first, what we'll do is let's create that mini-map. So in this uh, series, at least for now, I'm going to create a square mini-map. However, if you would like a round mini-map, I will link you to a short tutorial I did uh, a couple of months ago on how to create a round minimap. And it's entirely up to you. You can have one or the other. You can even have both and switch them out if you want to. The principle is pretty much the same. So to begin with, let's go to game object, UI, and let's start with, let's start with a raw image. And on this raw image, it's just basically going to be white. So let's zoom out and take a look at our entire screen. So you can see up here, this is our heart, so we know we need to switch around and go this way. I'm gonna have the minimap in the bottom right, I think. So I'm gonna take this raw image, uh, let's select this tool and move it down here. So this particular um, image that we're gonna use here, I'm gonna use as a border. So I'm gonna change the color to, let's have it a kind of bluish color just for a bit of variance rather than have it white or black. Next thing, I'm gonna increase the width by five. So I'm gonna have 105 by 105 and I'm gonna anchor it to the bottom right. Now, next thing we need to do is take this raw image and create another one and create that as a child object. So let's right click first off and rename and have this mini map. Hold control, press D to duplicate. And I'm going to drag and drop that onto Minimap. And I'm going to shrink it to, let's say, 98 by 98. And I also want to have it center. So it's center of whatever the parent object is. And I'm going to call this Minimap Render. So the idea of how this works is we need to render an image directly onto this object. So to do that, we obviously want to see down from where our player is. So if we go to our first person controller, right click and go to camera. You can see we have that there. So if we raise it up and rotate downwards on X by 90, you can see just how much that camera is going to render. Now it's up to you how far or how wide you want this camera to render. So I'm going to have it about, let's say about there, I think. Uh, right click, rename and have this mini app cam. Uh, next thing we need to do is in the textures folder, we need to right click, create and use something called render texture. And let's call this mini map text. So what's going to happen here is the camera that we've added to our player is going to render whatever it sees onto this texture. And to do that, make sure we have the minimap cam selected and the target texture is going to be that minimap text. So drag and drop onto there. Now you won't see too much of a difference at the moment. You won't see this change or anything because we're not doing it real time as such. Uh, to get an actual image appear on the screen, we need to use this on the minimap render. And to do that, it really is just a case of dragging and dropping onto there. Now, theoretically, what we've done is added an extra camera, but that camera will not be the default camera because I think the way Unity is coded, especially with this first person controller, is this will always be the default one. So when we press play, we should be able to see, there it is. We now have a minimap camera looking down wherever we go. So it's also worth noting at this point, it looked a little faded. So you can always change that by just changing this back to white. And obviously the main minimap color, the border, you can have that as whatever. You could have it as a dark blue. You could have it black. you know, it's entirely up to you. It did look a little small to me. So what I'm going to do is expand it. Let's have it as 165 by 165. Hopefully that doesn't look ridiculous. So I'm going to bring that up this way to about there. And then obviously I've got to resize whatever object is inside it. So let's have this as 160 by, nice one, 160 by 
60 and press play again. Perfect. Now I feel a minimap is quite useful for a lot of things. And the way we've done this, it's kind of up to you how you want to uh, go further with this minimap. You could probably have an arrow in the middle. You could have a little dot. In fact, I'll add a little dot just for a little convenience so we can see our exact player point. And to do that, we could just quickly and easily create another UI element and just a, another raw image and have it quite minuscule. So two by two or might be a little bit small. Let's increase that to about four by four. And I'm going to have that as green, a dark green, because why not, eh? So, as I said, if you want a bigger mini map, if you want some, uh, sorry, a round mini map that's bigger, um, well, yeah, I suppose you could have it smaller if you wanted. I'll put a link, there'll be a link somewhere here, whether it's in the description, on the video itself, but I'll link you to a small tutorial I did on how to create that round mini map. I think I might change it to blue. Okay, so next thing we'll do, let's have a look at a skybox. Now we're gonna to go to the asset store here because the asset store is our friend. Now a lot of people do get confused with the asset store because they don't want to think they're you know, stealing assets, but it's never really that case. That's not how the asset store works. People may have heard the term asset flipping, but realistically it, it, it's, it's basically if you take an entire game from the asset store and claim it as your own, you're entitled to take assets and use them for your own personal development and even your own commercial development. So to get the asset store, hold control, press nine on the keyboard, or you could go to window and go to asset store. Now I feel a skybox adds a lot of depth to any game. So at the top, if we just type in skybox, and there is free stuff on the asset store and everything we do in this series is free. So we're going to click free only and you'll see loads of different assets that you can use for a skybox. Uh, for this particular series, I have used this skybox and obviously credit goes to the original creator. I did not have any input in this asset. Uh, I have received nothing for using this asset because I've, it's just something I feel is worthwhile for this series. So if you would like to, you would import or download and it will bring it into your scene. So let me close that now. And I've already gone ahead and brought it in. It's called Wispy Sky. So to get a skybox, let me double click on our first person controller to get us back down. Let's face the sky slightly. And if we go to window and we go to lighting and settings, we can set the skybox material here. So if we click the little button there and we can type in here, Wispy. And then let's say Wispy Skybox Map 2 or the original, it, it's entirely up to you. There are different ways of creating a skybox, more advanced skyboxes, which can kind of cycle through day and night, which we may move on to because I think it'd be a worthwhile endeavor. For now, I, I like how this skybox looks, so I'm sticking with this one, skybox map two. So we can close that. And if we press play and have a look at our game, we can see just how much more of an impact it has on the game itself. It's starting to look even more realistic, even more nice. So the last thing we're going to look at this time is money. Now we have dealt with a global experience and a couple of global um, items, health as well and stuff. But this quest here that we originally take, it offered us 100 gold. So let's put that into practice. So in our main scripts folder, let's right click, create, C sharp script, and let's call this global cache. And within this script, what we're gonna do is have a couple of variables and we'll also be able to display how much cash we have. So let's get rid of the note at the top. We don't need that. And let's start with public static int gold amount and also the internal version of that. So public int internal gold. And finally, we'll have the on-screen display of that. And because we're gonna use some UI elements, we need to add it to our namespace at the top. So using unity engine.ui and then 
public game object gold display semicolon so in void update we'll do gold display dot get component in spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text equals and we'll say we'll have it in cap so gold colon space close the uh, bracket plus internal gold semicolon so obviously before that line we need to make internal gold equal to gold amount semicolon and that's pretty much all there is to it i'm going to take out that note and i'm going to leave in void start just in case because we may use it later on so head back to unity now and i'm going to close the canvas just for now because we're going to use it again in a second and i'm going to have on here game object create empty f2 global cache object and then obviously drag and drop global cache onto there so the final thing to do here is let's create this gold display and i want to create just a simple text which we can probably advance later on because we can have a picture of gold or something uh, so ui text and i'm going to have it in the top right i think so let's bring this into perspective zoom out let's have it top left uh, top right sorry i said didn't i uh let's have it as white text and bring it into position <clears throat> about there and i think it needs, definitely needs to be a little bit bigger so let's have that as 36 just expand and there we go right click create empty oops sorry not create empty uh, we've already created that haven't we so we just need to rename this and just say gold display and on global cache object we just need to set that variable there and press play and we can see even though it says new text it automatically updates to gold zero so let's actually make that worthwhile let's get ourselves 100 gold when we complete that quest so complete trigger here the script that's attached to it quest 001 complete after quest uh, manager sub number zero let's change that uh, sorry let's add i should say <laughs> and let's add in global cache dot um what we've got it as it's gold amount isn't it sorry not current gold gold amount plus equals 100 because like i say it promises 100 gold and it doesn't give us it it just gives us the experience so now let's put this into perspective let's test this let's make sure it all works yes i know we still got hold of our sword that's not to worry another bug there so let's deal with that uh, in fact we'll deal with that in the next episode we'll deal with that little bug there all it basically is is we've just got to set a couple of variables to turn off the minimap at certain points but well, that's that's not a problem and there we go let's take the sword let's head back and let's hand it in and we should be able to see as soon as we hand it in that our gold changes to 100 hopefully anyway there we go so now we've got 100 gold perfect so next episode what we'll do is we'll take a look at some npcs um around our, our little village so we'll probably maybe one or two have them walking around uh we'll sort out that little bug that we found there uh, we'll start looking at player prefs and we'll start experimenting with that red samurai npc um especially with the text box so guys until that next episode Thank you very much for watching.